Hello. Myself and Pudding here have been chatting about the imposter syndrome and uh, how our own self-doubts can come flooding in and stop us from pushing ourselves into the unknown and being even better than we are already. And this episode is going to be all about that. Want to say hi? Roll the intro. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Comedy. My name is Gary Michaels and each week I upload tutorial videos on comedy and performance theory. If you are a new comedian starting out in your comedy career then this is a channel for you and I urge you to hit the subscribe button so you never miss out in a future episode. In this video I am going to be talking about the imposter syndrome. About 75% of people suffer from it, and I certainly am one of them. Also, many comics I know in person have brought this up and suffer from it frequently, so it's something I want to address in this episode today. And because I have suffered from this many, many times over many, many years, I do feel I know a little bit about it, and I hope my insights might inspire you or might help you out a little bit. And I also feel the imposter syndrome is not something that you want to get rid of. And... Why that is, I will go into more detail, but ultimately the imposter syndrome comes to us all when we are pushing ourselves more into the unknown. When we're about to do something we've not done before, and all it is is our subconscious trying to pull us back into our comfort zone. To be honest, this episode right here is the one that was one of the hardest so far that I had to make because I suffered from the imposter syndrome. It took me many times to start recording this and I have started to record this episode many times only to immediately quit because my self-doubt crept in and I thought what do I have to tell people about this but that was the imposter syndrome telling me that and since it's the imposter syndrome that's surrounding me right now I thought a better time than to face the beast and dive into what it is and discuss it here on this channel. We are consistently comparing ourselves to other people especially their most successful sides of them. On social media, we are absolutely flooded with the best of other people. People that we know, people that we don't know. If you are a member of any of the social media platforms, you will be absolutely flooded by people's success, the best pictures of themselves and their most successful moments. Of course, that is what people put up of themselves and why shouldn't they? I am not a fan of putting up the worst of yourself and complaining about things. And if it takes you so much effort and work and time and dedication to get to a fraction of their success even though their success is way more than yours and it, they don't seem to have to work for it. Of course in real life this is not true. The majority of people have to work incredibly hard for even the smallest gain of success whether it be on social media or on the stage or even in their writing. You must understand one thing about this imposter syndrome. It will come at a time when you are pushing yourself. Notice how you never feel it if you've done your tasks that you are very, very comfortable doing and have done many, many times. It's only going to come flooding in when you are about to do something new. Something that you must prove to yourself and others that you are absolutely capable in doing. And of course, there's going to be downfalls and there's going to be failures. And that is exactly what it is. It's your self-doubt and subconscious flooding in to keep you safe and keep you in a place of comfort zone where you know exactly what is going to go on day to day. But I urge you to push against it any chance you get. The very thing about being a stand-up comic is you are saying to the world, everyone who wants to listen to your voice, that you are worth listening to. That you have something to say. And of course, we compare ourselves with the most successful versions of that. Our favourite comedians or our favourite comedy writers. And that comparison, especially when we're at the beginning of our career, is just so, so massive. They're at the peak of their game and we are way down here just struggling just to be seen. And it's hard enough to do it the correct way when everything is working out for us. But our self-doubt comes flooding in time and time again to try and keep us in a day-to-day -day system. Not pushing ourselves, not getting better and not putting our voice out there for the world to hear it. But thankfully there are a few things we can do to help ourselves out in times when we feel this imposter syndrome flooding in. First of all, I want you to look back at your success so far. It doesn't matter how long you've been a comedian or are on your comedy journey. I want you to look back at the beginning and I want you to remember all the fears you used to have. It might be about your first time you ever performed or even before the first time you ever performed. Or it might be how awkward it felt to do your first ever writing session. 
or it might be how awkward it felt to first time ever talking in front of a camera. I urge people all the time to keep a journal dedicated just to their success of their character and their career in stand-up comedy. This way you can look back and see all the fears that you once had about something now you kind of take for granted. If you performed a handful of open mic comedy gigs, you are way more confident than you were before your first ever stand-up comedy gig. If you perform 50 comedy gigs, you are way, way more confident than you were at gig number 20. And it just multiplies from there. That is the great thing about success. That is the great thing about facing the unknown. The more we do it, the more confident we get as we go into it. Just like fear and self-doubt and negativity build momentum, the great thing is the opposite is true too. Confidence and success and thriving into the unknown, that builds momentum as well. So think about it when you look at the whole picture and how successful you want to be in five or ten years and you have the big stage and the big name and lights and everyone knows who you are, that is a massive mountain. But you have to remember that you are looking at the top of that mountain when you see that picture. That is a great thing to work towards and I do advise having that picture in mind. However, at the beginning and during the middle, it's important to focus on the baby steps. Yes, you might know the end picture and you might know what you want it to look like. Chances are it's going to look very different when you finally get there. But what you can focus on and what probably most likely will look the same is the baby steps. Break down exactly how it is you are going to take the first few steps in order for this to happen. Focus on the length of your set and adding an extra two or three minutes to it. You might only be performing five minutes of comedy at the moment or maybe 10 or 20. Next time, focus on what it would be to add an extra five minutes to your routine. What jokes are working well enough for you where you can turn them into stories and get longer stage time out of them? How many more punchlines can you add into your already existing stories to add a lot more laughs and a lot more attention from the audience to it? How many more gigs can you apply for? How much more social media interaction you can have with your already existing fan base or already existing community of comedians. Set out small goals for yourself that you know you can crush and that will go a little bit towards helping this imposter syndrome stay under control. Anxiety, self-doubt, perfectionism and the fear of failure. They're all feelings that come flooding in when we have the imposter syndrome. And my opinion on the imposter syndrome is this. It is a good thing to have. I really do feel that those who have the imposter syndrome have also the ability of knowing how they are perceived and also are able to understand what it is they can do and know full well the amount of failures that are in front of them and still they go headstrong into it anyway. That all to me represents perception and I think perception is the most important word in stand-up comedy. Comedians have to understand how they are perceived by an audience. If you do not know how an audience perceives you when you are on stage, it doesn't matter how much of a great writer you are, you are not going to get ahead and get the best out of your onstage performance. I have seen comedians time and time again enter the building full of confidence, absolutely believe in themselves 100% and then wonder why they didn't connect and why the audience didn't appreciate their genius. Well, the same people cannot hold me interested in a conversation when it's one to one. How can you expect to win over an entire audience if you cannot hold a conversation one on one with somebody? It's simply not going to work. So if you are one of the 75 to 80% of people who suffer from the imposter syndrome, then fair play to you. You kind of have an extra ability of understanding how you are coming across. Even if it is your own self giving you criticism you don't necessarily want. Another technique I can offer that will help you greatly is this. Learn to accept compliments. You should take compliments from people and be grateful for them. And let them know that you are grateful for them. If people are going to compliment you, it is their understanding that you have done a good job. If you don't accept a compliment, you are telling them that they don't know what they're talking about and they shouldn't ever be giving you any praise. You're putting yourself down and just as bad, you're putting them down. And all they wanted to do is reach out and offer some support. Getting into a habit of denying compliments over and over again is only going to bring you anxiety and self-doubt in tenfold. It's not a good way to be and I've seen it before. It looks really bad when someone has done a very good job got a compliment and only shut it down. What The great thing about this is once you do learn to take compliments, they feel better when someone gives them to you. 
and the more used to them you get and the more grateful you are when they do arrive, well, the more they will arrive as you will focus in on what works and what people like about who you are. It's a brilliant thing to have high ambitions on yourself. The sooner you understand this, the better. And being a stand-up comic, you are saying to the world that you have something to say, that your voice is worth listening to. And you're probably watching this video in the hope of one day having a video on YouTube yourself or having your voice on whatever platform there may be and you want an audience for yourself. And maybe you're going to get some information on how to go about that on these videos. I sure hope you do. And I'm working to add plenty more videos on how you can do that as well as the ones I already have on this channel. And I do this because I want to hear from you. You do have something to say. Look forward getting used to talking in front of an audience on stage. Look forward getting used to talking to the lens. Talking to the lens is something that does not come naturally to me, but I'm doing it a lot now and I'm getting better at it. So my imposter syndrome comes in ticking a lot. Every time I go to hit the button record and set the microphone up, my feelings of self-doubt come flooding back in and I think, what the hell do I have to tell people? But I've uploaded the first video and the second video and then the fifth and then the sixth. And bit by bit they are being watched, they are being viewed, people are liking them and are subscribing to the channel quite nicely. All of these things tell me that I'm doing good by people. So that's why I want you to look back on your comedy journey as often as you can and remember those fears that you once have that you now don't even consider. They're not even a part of you anymore. Maybe you used to be absolutely terrified before you walked up on stage and now it might not be gone entirely but you can approach the stage with way more confidence than you used to. I want you to remember those fears you used to have and I do not want you to get too comfortable. As soon as those fears go away and you're able to approach the stage and approach talking in front of an audience as often as you like, well then I want you to search out the next stage in your career. I want you to keep pushing yourself. I want that imposter syndrome to keep flooding in only for you to be able to control it each and every time. And I will give you another technique on how you can do that right about now. And this is an incredibly important technique. The quicker you implement this, the better it will be for you. This has helped me out an awful lot and it's a fun thing to do as well. I want you to give your imposter syndrome a name. I want you to create an entire different identity from yourself. You can go all psycho on me if you want. I want you to give it a name. I want you to give it an identity. So when it comes flooding in, you can call it a name. You can actually have an identity for it and you can communicate it in your own head back and forth. We're all mental anyway. We write jokes for a living and we express ourselves on stage for a public to either hate us and love us. It's a crazy business we're in. Adapt to the craziness and be as crazy as you possibly can. By giving your imposter syndrome a name, you can play with it and you can make it into whatever you want. You can even bully it if you want, but understanding that it's just your subconscious come running, rushing in whenever you are doing something that is more grand and pushing yourself into the unknown, which is exactly what you should be doing. That's all it is. And by giving it a name, you can treat it the way that it needs to be treated and complete control for you at all times. So if you're clicking on this video, the chances are you definitely have imposter syndrome. Otherwise, you wouldn't want to get rid of it because you wouldn't even know what it is. But it's a great thing to have because it represents you understanding exactly the failures that may lie in your path. And of course, some of us do fail from time to time. And the more you push yourself and the more you push yourself and the more you send off emails for the next gig, that's the next step in your career, or you're performing on a bigger stage than you're used to, or whatever that big step may be, there will be failures and there will be setbacks. But notice how whenever they do happen to us, it's not that big a deal. We can pretty much get over them, especially if you have many other gigs booked and planned in front of you. It's very easy then just to pick yourself back up and get performing again. And I still fell on stage from time to time and it really doesn't matter to me too much. Of course, I don't like it when it happens, but I simply regroup myself, write down a few of the reasons why it could have happened and try and address them so they don't happen again. I try and learn from every single situation where I failed or succeeded in the past, only to try and make myself as strong as I can be on stage. And that is the game we are in, it's constantly critiquing our own work how can we be more effective on stage? How can we be more effective writing? So remember, you're doing right. Keep putting yourself in a position where you feel just a little bit of the imposter syndrome flooding in. Call it a name 
treat it the way it needs to be treated whatever way that is that you want to figure out that's fine with me and keep on creating keep on pushing yourself and keep on doing your thing of course i've said it time and time again already on this channel the more successful and the more we push ourselves the better we become at it so be fearless in your approach today and you'll be even more fearless tomorrow keep on that path and of course there will be downfalls and there will be setbacks sometimes we will burn ourselves out when we burn ourselves out the best thing to do is go back to our most basic successful productive day it might only be 10 minutes of writing it might only be one gig a week it doesn't matter as long as you are still doing something productive going back to doing absolutely nothing productive doesn't do anyone any favors so figure out a default to live by where you are just doing even a slight bit of work something even if it's only writing one joke a day or one joke every two days but i would urge you to do something of a comedy related every single day whether it's just watching good comedy on youtube or good comedy videos of stand-up comics that you like all those things are going to add to your whole on-stage persona dive into as much material as you possibly can and yes, the imposter syndrome is going to come back to you time and time again. But become friends with it and treat it the way you want. Give it that identity and it will go a long way to helping you out. One other thing I have noticed, and this is very personal to me, but maybe by telling you it will help you out a lot. I notice when I suffer from the imposter syndrome quite a lot is during hangovers. And I don't drink all the time and all that much. But when I do drink, I notice when I am drinking, I am very confident and I'm very optimistic about the future. I can come up with quite crazy plans for where I want to be, only for the next day to have a real bad hangover and feel very, very down about myself and have all the self-doubt come flooding back in. So therefore, when I'm in creating process and when I'm doing things like this or writing a new show, I don't drink at all. I try and cut it completely out because I know it's no good for me and I do. And the last feeling I have when drinking is that negative feeling and I don't want that, so I cut out those things. That's just a little tip that I have that I have to live by. Maybe it'll trigger something in you too. Maybe it's not alcohol with you. Maybe it's something else you go to and it just makes you feel real down and that you could be doing better for yourself. Well, then avoid those things that are going to cause that emotional pull on you. But when it comes as its only purpose because you're pushing yourself onto the next level, I would say face it head on in and go do that thing that pushes yourself. Do the thing that makes you fearful. And who cares if it doesn't succeed? The chances are the majority of people are going to be behind you and going to be on it because people love to see other people push themselves. So that will wrap it up here and I will address this topic in the future and I would also love to address this topic right in the comment section. If you suffer from the imposter syndrome then do let me know if this video has helped you out in any way in the comment section. I would love to jump in the conversation as well and maybe even be able to offer more tips based on your comments so please do get involved in the comment section. If you have enjoyed this video then I urge you to hit the like button. It really helps me out and it makes me feel great that you were getting some value from these videos and as I said at the beginning Beginning and all the way throughout please do subscribe join the community never miss a future video it really makes me feel great that we are already blasted over a hundred subscribers now at about 150 subscribers and growing all the time the channel is just a month old so I appreciate that a lot thanks very much for watching and you can of course as always hit any of the links on the screen you see right now and get into more comedy tutorials for you get the best out of your comedy career i will see you on the next one right on